Hello, everybody. My name is Printed Boxdale, and I hope that you have you enjoying this YouTube channel. Will you please hit the subscribe and like button? And y'all are gonna have a hallelujah good time, but we got many more to come. And let's have a good time together. Hello, hello, everybody, once again. I want you to know it's a privilege to be with you uh, again. And once again, I want to thank each one of you for taking the time out of your busy schedule just for us to have this discussion once again in God most holy in divine word. You know, God is a good God and God is a just God. Now I want to do get us a quick review on the last uh, discussion we had. You remember we said that you to take a mirror and look in and, and look into the mirror and tell me who image that you see in the mirror. And when you took that mirror, you was to, supposed to have take the Bible and put the Bible beside your face when you looked into the mirror. Now, this question I want to ask you, did you do it? Did you take that mirror and look into the mirror and had the Bible beside your face? Now, the reason why we ask you to take this mirror and look into this mirror because as we continue to go on into God's Word, God's Word is going to get a little bit deeper and deeper for us to see, to search out our soul in salvation. So when you look into the mirror, you are the one that's going to have to stand one day in the day of judgment. See, the Bible already said uh, in Hebrew chapter 9 and verse 27, he said, as it is appointed unto man wants to die. See, we got to die. And we got to leave this world. And when we leave this world, our soul, the one that's going to have to stand in judgment and ask the Lord how we live this life. Now, let me tell you this. Don't you know that in our body, we have three parts of our body? That three parts. So when we're looking at in this mirror at ourselves, we got three parts. What are they? We got body, soul, and spirit. Let me say that one more time. What, what make us complete? is we have a body. The body is the house where the soul dwells. I said the body is the house where the soul dwells. So the body going to decay and go back to the ground in which it came. Now, the spirit of man is what, what, what moves us, what keeps us moving. But now this spirit we have, now, uh, now when we look at the uh, Genesis, we're not going to get into Genesis. Remember, we're going to be dealing with, we probably used to, uh, some Old Testament scriptures and we're going to still be dealing with the New Testament scriptures, okay? So now remember, before we go on, now remember if you ain't used to using your Bible, remember what you're supposed to do. What do you supposed to do? Number one, when you hear scriptures, put the CD on pause and find the scripture for yourself. Why you want to do this? This is a Bible class. I'm saying again, this is a Bible class. Now, now, I might do a little something a little different in this class here because, see, I got the, uh, uh, before we get digging into this lesson, I want to make sure before we go in the further in the lesson, that I give each individual the opportunity, the chance to be a member of the Church of Christ. Now, let me tell you the reason why this. Because, see, it's in when you come into the body of Christ, the Lord will put his spirit in you, and his spirit will help you, guide you through his word. But you got to come to, the, to Christ first. See, that's why uh, the scripture said, Come unto me, all of you that have it later, and I will give you rest. See, there's rest in Christ. There is rest in Christ. Yes, sir. There is nothing but sweet rest in Jesus Christ. Now, now, you know, the Bible tells us in the book of Matthew, the 16th chapter and verse 18. The Bible said, and Jesus, uh, uh, Bible, and Jesus said unto Peter, up on this rock, I will build my church in the gates of hell will not prevail against it. You must be a member of the Church of Christ because the gates of hell will not prevail against the Church of Christ. This is the church that Jesus gave his life for. For the Bible told us over here in John chapter 14 and verse number six, 
Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So you got to be in the church. If you want to go to the Father, you got to go through the Son. The Son said he was the what? Way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. He said, now, sis, I'm the way, the truth, and the light. Now, let me tell you, no man, I don't care who you is. He said, no man, I don't care who you is. Let me say that again. Because, see, people want to listen to man and disregard the word of God. But Jesus said, no man come unto the Father except he come by me. I just want to tell you a little bit about the Church of Christ. Just for, just for a few moments here because when we get an invitation, you can, under, you can know why you want to be a member of the Church of Christ. Number one, that Jesus died for his church. Number one, right, Christ died for his church. His church and his church only. Jesus only died for his church. That one church that he gave his life for. Now let me tell you what he did to the church that he died for. Peter, I mean, uh, Paul wrote and said in uh, 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 Acts 4.12, I mean, uh, uh, let me get the scripture, hold on here. Yes, uh, over here in the book of Acts, chapter 4 and verse 12, but I want to back up right here in this scripture, the New Testament, the New Testament, New Testament, okay? I just want to give you this little brief of the church now, because we got to get back to dealing with uh, how important your soul and salvation is to you, but I just want to let you know that I got to give you some, some little doctoring of the church, because as we go on and examine ourselves and see where we're standing with the Lord Jesus Christ, so you have some knowledge of why this church is so important. Now look in Acts chapter 4 and verse number 11, that's the New Testament. The Bible said this, this is the stone which was set at north of your, uh, of your builder, which is becoming the head of the corner. Now notice he said that he is the head of the corner. That's why and Jesus said up on the rock, I will build my church. Why? Because he become the head of the corner of the church. Now since he become the head of the corner of the church of Christ and none other, now look what he said to let us know that we cannot be confused concerning the one church. That men will not be confused concerning the one church. But I tell you what, now before I do this, I want to back up another verse here in Acts chapter 4. Let's look at verse number 10. Okay, verse 10, we're going to look at 10, 10, 11, and 12, okay? Let's Acts chapter 4, we're going to look at verse 10, 11, and 12. Okay, now, make sure that you put this uh, CD on pause and find the scripture, okay? Now look what it says here. But be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name, look at that name, Look at that name. He said, Be it known unto you all and to all the peoples of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye had crucified, whom God had raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. Now look at this. Now, this is letting us know that Jesus is the man. And since Jesus is the man, his name is Jesus. Not John the Baptist, not John Smith, not John Calvin, not the Roman Catholic Church. He's talking about Jesus, right? He said, be it known unto you all and all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified. Okay, who did they crucify? Now, we got to look at that. See, the Bible is simple and it's not hard to understand. Everybody talk about that Christ was crucified. He died for my sin, but yet we don't want to do what he tells us to do. Jesus said, upon this rock, Acts, I mean, uh, Matthew 16, 18, Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church. Who said that? The one was crucified for our sin. Who said that? The one that died out there on Mount Calvary. Who did that? The one that died for you and me. The one who said, I am the way. The truth and the light that no man come unto me, ex uh, come unto me, except he come by the Father. This is the one that we're talking about. Then he said, okay, um, read 10 again, we'll get, get to 11. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom he had crucified, whom God had raised from the dead, even by 
him does this man stand here before you hold. Now look what he said. Since, since this is Jesus and Jesus is the man, look what he said. This is the stone. I mean, this is it. This is all we got. This is the stone. This, this, this is the only way we got. This is the stone. This is the stone which was set at north of the old building, which will become the head of the corner. See, Jesus the head of the corner. The corner of what? Of the church. That's why I said upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, I don't want some of you to become uh, displaced now, because some of you might have questions concerning this. And, I, and, I, and I'm waiting on your answer, your question. I am waiting on you to send me questions concerning about your soul and salvation. Because we build the lesson up by the question that you have, okay? Let me say this. We build the lesson up by the question that you have. So if you have any questions, write them down. Don't get mad. Don't get all uh, bent out of shape. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because when we're talking about that, when we're looking in the mirror at oneself, we got some instruction from God's word, some things we got to do to examine ourselves to see where we're standing with the Lord Jesus. But look, verse number 12, to let us know that we can't be confused about this. this now look what it said. Neither is there salvation in any other. See, now the Bible says you can't go nowhere else. You can't go nowhere else. Show me in the Bible. Anywhere in the Bible where other than Jesus said that he will build a church. Show me where John the Baptist said that he will build a church. I'm just asking a question. Not to offend anyone, okay? I'm just asking a question. I mean, you ask the Church of Christ question every day. But why you get mad when we ask you a question? Some do. I'm not saying everybody do, okay? But now, now look what he said. He said, neither there's salvation in any other. Okay, he said, for there is none other name on the heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So let me ask you this question. If you can be saved in some other place, where is it in the Bible? Where is it? Show, will you please send me some Bible and show me where is it in the Bible that you can be saved somewhere else? Can you show me in the Bible other than Jesus Christ that said he will build a church? Can you show me in the Bible where someone else said they will build a church? Can you show me in the Bible yourself? Can you take time and dig out in the Bible? Can you show me somebody else that died on the cross of Calvary, that they pierced him in the side, beat him all night long, dragged him from judgment hall to judgment hall and, and, and ministered him and brought him before the people and they cried out, crucify him, crucify him. Can you show me anybody else in the word of God other than Jesus that done this? Now, can you? Now, we get, the Bible get real and it get plain and it get simple. The Bible is simple. Who was crucified for me? Jesus. Who had the salvation? Jesus. Who built the church? Jesus. Who put all authority in the church? Jesus. Who is the head of, of the church? Jesus. Who church is it? It belongs to Jesus. Why? Because the Bible has said, neither there's salvation in any other. For there, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. So I just want to give you just just a little brief about the Lord Church, the Church of Christ. The Church of Christ. And I, uh, hold on just a moment. I want to grab another scripture here. Just hold on for a second. Now, uh, now I want you to uh, go to the book of Matthew right quickly, okay? Book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse number 28, okay? That's the book of Matthew, chapter 11, New Testament, in verse number 28 and 29. Book of Matthew. Book of Matthew, New Testament. You know, remember, look into your uh, Bible, find your Old and New Testament, find the scripture, okay? And read the Bible for yourself. Please read the scripture for your own self. You got to know what the dust said the Lord. Because when the invitation given unto you, you're going to have the choice to whether you want to obey the Lord 
Uh, you can stay where you're at. I mean, that's your business, you know. Uh, okay, now look what it says here in the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 28. Jesus said, come. Now, Jesus told you to come, right? Jesus said, come. Come where? He said, come unto me, all you that, that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus said he want to give you rest. But you got to come unto him. And he said, and, 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 uh, and, okay, come unto me, all ye that labor. Now, how can you be a labor of the Lord if you not have done what he said do? Now, remember, to get to Christ, you got to remember, he only has salvation in one place. We saw that in the book of Acts, chapter 4, 12. He said, neither is there salvation in any other. We saw that he is the head of the corner. He is the head corner. And then he said, this man's name is Jesus of Nazareth. So we saw this. So we cannot be confused concerning the Lord's church. Remember that Jesus said that he was going to build a church. Not John the Baptist, not uh, uh, the Roman Catholic, not the uh, modern day saints, not the Jehovah Witness, ain't, and, uh, none of them don't have any salvation for you. Now, I don't mean any harm, but we just looking at the Bible, just the Bible itself, just the Bible, not judging anyone, just looking at the Bible. This is what the Bible's saying. Um, now, this is what the Scripture's saying. It's not about you, it's not about me, it's about what the Scripture's saying. If Jesus said he wants the way, how many ways he got? He said, he is the way. That means it can't be, be but one way. And Jesus said, I'm going to build my church, which means it can only be but one church. And in this one church is where the salvation is. Now, since you, if you want this salvation, Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor. Then he said, come to him, and then get into some labor. Get into some labor in our heavy labor. Then you're going to get heavy later, and your burden will get heavy that time, but he's going to be there to help lift you up. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor, and I'll have it later, and I will, will do what, Christ? He said, and I will give you rest. Then he said, take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your soul. Now we're back at the soul. He said, ye shall find rest for your soul. So this brings us back to now. How important is your soul in salvation to you? Jesus said you can find rest for your soul. So where am I going to find this rest for my soul? In Jesus Christ. How am I going to find this rest for my soul? Because I'm going to realize that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. How am I going to find rest for my soul? Because I know that it's in the church. That where the salvation is and nowhere else. All of this Bible, nothing more, nothing less. There is nothing more, nothing less that we can tell you in the church of Christ. Y'all, we are having a good time as of this for. Now let me pause here for a minute and 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 and, and ask you this. Do you have any question? Do you have any question? Now, if you have any question, write your question down on your paper so you will not forget them, okay? And send your question to, and, and go run into the churches of Christ in your area with your question. And then the brethren there will deal, will get with you and help you to understand what thus says the Lord. So what we do in these lessons we're dealing with, we just open the door to your mind of your understanding to get you in the knowledge of the Lord. Now, it's going to be left up to you to seek out and go and try to, uh, uh, the Church of Christ all over Nashville, Tennessee. Let me give you some more example, which we did in the other first part we had. We said that was Old Hickory Boulevard Church of Christ. We said that was East Side Church of Christ. We said that was Jackson Street Church of Christ, 40th Avenue, 15th Avenue, uh, uh, Foster Avenue Church of Christ. Um, you know, and then we got Church of Christ in Gallatin, Tennessee. We got Church of Christ in Memphis, Tennessee. We got Church of Christ in Oklahoma, Tennessee. We got Church of Christ in Florida. I mean, all over the nation, they are there. 
So we, so all they got to do is look in your telephone book and find somebody, or you know somebody in the Church of Christ, run, run quickly and ask the question so that your soul can salvation can be saved. Okay, now, now, let me say this. Any time that you hear any lesson that you hear from any brother in the Church of Christ that been presented to you, and if you understand what you need to do, don't wait till next week. Don't wait till tomorrow. Get on your phone and call somebody and tell them, I understand what I need to do. I have heard, believe, repent, confess. I'm ready to go down there in the water and get my sin washed away. I'm ready to be a member of the Church of Christ. I want to be a member of that church that they, that, that, that where they crucified my Lord. I want to be a member of that church that where they beat him all night long, dragged him from judgment hall, and through his precious blood, he made me clean. He can make me whole again by if I obey him. Okay, now, so much of that. Now, now I'm just doing this. Now, if you have any question, please, anytime you hear the lesson, now, I didn't get into this on the first part, but we're going to do this here. So anytime you have your question, write them down. Let me say that again. Write your question down. And we are looking for your question. Now, on Wednesday night, you run to the Church of Christ and attend to the Bible class on Wednesday night. And on Sunday morning, run quickly to the Bible class that each congregation have on Sunday morning and ask the question, what must I do to be saved? And they'll, and members, they'll be glad to sit down and explain to you the elders, deacons, and preachers, and members in the church uh, waiting on you to come so we can be able to instruct you in the way of the Lord. So these lessons is trying to get you geared up and trying to get you to get into some knowledge of the Lord, okay? Trying to get you in the frame of mind, some knowledge of the Lord, because somebody, some know a little about the Lord, and some just don't know about the Lord. So that's why we ask some questions while we're doing the lesson trying to get you ready for the Lord. Okay, now, now so much of that. Now, now how important is your soul and salvation to you? Only you within yourself hold the key. To that answer. Remember the last lesson we had? We talked about there are some that don't even believe in God. You remember that? And we said that what was your answer? Yes or no? You had to answer yes or no. We even said that there were some don't even believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So we asked you to ask you to answer the question, yes or no. But we talked about a little bit about the man that said there's no God. We saw in the Bible. Now, if you got your notes, y'all look back at your notes. Now, now we don't been over the old scripture, but you go back over your notes. Pull your notes out. Anytime we have in class, pull your notes out. Remember, this is a Bible class. This is a Bible class. This is a Bible class for you, okay? This is a Bible class, give you a chance to ask questions, write your question down, something you don't quite understand. You can ask questions. Now, if you're interested in having Bible class set, set up in your home, we in the middle of the Church of Christ be glad to come and sit down with you and go into more detail face to face uh, looking at you face to face. You know, this is just a lesson on a CD. But if you're interested and want to sit down and look face to face, we'll be glad to sit down and talk to you. But we have some people that 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 they are not used to uh, uh, talking to folks in face to face. So that's why this CD is so important to give you a chance to ask your question, write your question down, and then we'll build lesson up on the question that what you ask to help you to understand what thus said the will of the Lord. And see, the lesson that, that you get, guess what? You can continue to go over them over and over and over again. Now, so now, it says in the book of Psalms, chapter, four, uh, Psalms, chapter 14 and verse 1. You remember that? 
They said the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. So we know that, that, that there are foolish people don't believe in God. So we told you in the beginning, if you don't believe in God, you might as well stop right now. Don't go in the further. So this is just a rehearse on what we looked at in the first lesson, okay? And then we talk about, there was a guy by the name of Thomas. Thomas said he wasn't going to believe in the Lord until he thrust him in the side where they pierced him and put his hand in his finger. But Jesus told him, said, blessed are those that have not seen, but yet believe. So we said that is a blessing for not seeing, but yet believing in the word of God. See? So, so that's mainly the thing that we'll, we were dealing with in the first lesson and getting you in the, in the frame of mind and to open the Bible up so that you can see what the will of the Lord is, okay? Now, now, now I want you to write this down, okay? Now, now as we look into God's Word, now, uh, we talked about laying down a format in the first part. A first part of this lesson. Now, you can have you can have a format, but on that format you got to have something to build this format up on. Is that right? So what we're talking about, you got to have a foundation for the format. Okay. Now, this is what we want to do. We want to build a foundation. So I want you to write down. I want to build a foundation for my soul and salvation. I want to start building a foundation for my soul and salvation. I want to see where I'm standing with the Lord. In order to build a foundation, we got to learn how to begin to build this foundation, okay? So this is where we're gonna begin, to build this format that we have up on a foundation. Now, that's why this mirror that we ask you to look into is so important. Because this mirror that when you look into, it's going to identify who you are. Let me say that again. This mirror going to identify who you are. Now, just for a little excitement's sake, okay? Now, I want you to write down. Now, if you go to a church and you belong to somebody's church, write that church down. Because you identify looking into that mirror who you are. Let me say that again. So while you're looking into this mirror, if you go to a church, take your uh, uh, paper and write down what you, now don't write down, I'm, I'm in the Lord's church, I'm going to the church, and I don't know, I'm, you don't need to put that down right there. All thing we want you to put down your paper right now. What is the name of the church you're going to? Write down the name of that church that you're going to. Write it down. Have you wrote it down? Now, since you wrote it down, now look. See, learning the way of the Lord is simple and it's easy. It's not hard, but we're going to get into a discussion in a minute why it become hard to us because there's going to be something that we're going to fail to do in our soul. If the soul fails to do this, regardless of what we talk about, it will never happen, okay? Now, look now. You don't wrote down the church that you attend to. I don't know what you put on your paper, but whatever you put on your paper. Now, I want you to look into the mirror, hold the paper up to your face on one side, and hold the Bible up on the other side. Remember, we are trying to find out about my soul. How is your soul standing with the Lord, okay? That's all we're doing. Simple. Just seeing where we're standing with the Lord. Okay, now, if you have taken this Bible and took your notepad and put one on one side and the Bible on the other side, now, now, say within yourself, can I find it in the Bible? Let me say that again. Now, say to yourself, can I find the church I wrote down in the Bible? Now, since you wrote that down, now ask yourself this question. Now, can I find in the Bible where Christ said he will build this church I'm going to? Let's say it one more time. 
Now, uh, I'm going to say the church of the potatoes because I don't want to offend anyone when we call it. Even, folk get mad when you start calling some names him, but, 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 but Jesus deal with the names, you know. But anyway, but I'm going to use the church of the potatoes, okay? Now, if I wrote down on my paper, I am a member of the church of the potatoes, okay? Now, I'm going to take my paper and put it aside my face right now. I said I am a part of the church of the potato. Now, when I put this up beside my face and put the Bible up beside my face, now I must ask myself, now what did the Bible say? What did Christ say in his word? Now, I must be able, if Christ, if the church of potatoes are right, then I must be able to find it in the Bible, okay? I must be able to find it in the Bible. Now, now I want you to keep in mind now, okay? Go back to St. John chapter uh, uh, 17, 17. Go back there, St. John chapter 17, 17. Okay. Are you there? Now look what Jesus said. Jesus said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy what? Word is truth. Ain't that right? So now if God's word is truth, and then if Jesus said he was the way, and that he is the son of, once they said he was the son of his own house, so if this his own house, so then if he have his own house, then how can I get out of his own house a potato church, okay? The church of the potato. I, I, I'm, just, I, I'm saying this to myself, not to you. I'm talking to me now. How can I get the church of the potato if Jesus Christ said he was the, that, 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 that he was going to be a his church. That his church, plural meaning it belongs to him, right? Okay, now. And then the scripture turned around and tell me, it said, uh, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. So if I want the truth, I got to go where Jesus put it at. Now, keep in mind, keep in mind now what Acts 4, 12 and told us. Keep in mind, what did he tell us? It said, neither their salvation where in any other. That's what the Bible says, right? So you got to remember, take your notes. And then when we talk about these scriptures, keep going back boy, and these scriptures and compare them. You see what we're saying is true. It's Bible. This is what Jesus is talking about. He said, neither their salvation in any other. Now, if we want this salvation, he said, we got to search what? The scripture. We got to search the scripture to, to find out about this salvation that we think we have. Now, he says, sanctify them through thy truth. Then, now, now then in, in, in uh, 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 John chapter 5 and verse 39, remember we saw that in the first lesson. St. John chapter 5 and verse 39. So what did he tell us in St. John chapter 5 and verse 39? He said, such, such, such what? Such the scripture. St. John 17, 17 says, sanctify them through thy truth. St. John 5, 39 says, such I mean, we got to look it out. Search the scripture. So that's why when we talk about if I'm in the church of the potato, I got to search the scripture to see is it there? Is it so? That's what Jesus told us. So that's why we said that we got to get some of you into reading your Bible so you can be able to compare what you're doing with the word. See? Because if you don't study the Bible, you don't know what's right and what's wrong. Let me say that again. If we don't get into the God word and study it, we, we won't know what's right or wrong. We'll believe in anything. We will believe, we will believe in anything. Anything goes because we don't know any different. But once we get and look into this mirror and looking at self, myself, looking at myself, looking at who that I am. Now know that when you're looking in this mirror, at yourself, guess what done happened? What you doing? See, I like this. So when you're looking in this mirror at yourself, see James talk about that when a man look into a mirror, you know, you can see yourself, you can see what you are, you know, as long as you're looking in this mirror, you can see who you are. So if you said you're going to a place and if it's not found in the Bible, you can see who you are. You're looking at the mirror, 
And when you're looking at that mirror, you're looking at nobody but you. You only see you. You don't see mama. You don't see daddy. You don't see brother. You don't see sister. You don't see the so-called reverend. Okay? You don't see the rabbi. You don't see the uh, anybody. Nobody in this mirror that you're looking in right now is nobody but you. Nobody but you. So now, when the day of judgment comes, remember we talked about uh, a little bit when we came on and Acts, I mean, First Hebrew chapter 9 and verse number 27. Now, we got to keep this in mind. Write this down and keep this in mind while you examine how important your soul to you, okay? Keep in mind that uh, Hebrew 9, 27 says, as it is appointed unto man once to die. Now, when you're looking in this mirror, you're looking at your soul, remember, you got to die. Okay, let me say that again. When you're looking in this mirror at you, yourself, and nobody else, remember, what you're looking at, it got to die. Now, since it's got to die, then that same image that you see in the mirror is we're going to have to face Jesus Christ at the judgment bar. The same one going to have to face Jesus at the judgment bar. Okay? Now, yes, sir. Now, uh, uh, you know, our time about gone. You know, by the time we started to get into a little more of this discussion, the only thing I'm waiting on now so we can really get into some so real good studying because I don't know what question that you have. I don't know what question that you want to ask. So now I'm asking you to please to send us questions, send us things that, 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 that if you don't quite understand about the Bible, you don't believe what something that, that been taught, send your question to us and we'll be glad to do DVDs I mean, CDs for you, and, 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 and the question that you ask, we'll deal with your question. Remember, our job is being in the churches of Christ is try to save as many souls as we can. We try to do it as humble as we know how. We try to do it with love, meekness and humble, not trying to de be belittle anyone. That's not our job. Our job is simply to tell you what does said the Lord. That's all we can do. Now, I want to pass this on to you. Now, write this down, 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 11. This is something that you need to remember. And, and remember, 1 Peter chapter 4, 11, tell us, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. So if anybody going to tell you anything, you better make sure it's coming from the oracles of God. Now, and to make sure that it's coming from the oracles of God. See, that's why you got to be in the church of Christ so you can learn how to deal, how to deal, deal with God's word. Because a lot of folks saying they're teaching the way of the Lord, but then these ways are not the way of the Lord. Let me give you one example. Uh, Paul said on one, one, on one occasion, and when you ask question, and we get questions from, we'll get into these scriptures. But right now, I just want to tell you about it, okay? Uh, Galatians chapter 1 and verse 6, I believe. Paul said, I marvel. Now, uh, 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 well, anyway, the scripture says this. It says, uh, uh, Paul said, Brothering, my heart desire a prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Okay, now, he said, Brethren, my heart desire prayer to God that Israel might be saved. He said that they might, they wasn't saved, but he said that they might be saved. Okay, then he said, for I bear them record that they have a zeal of God. See, we have a lot of people in this world got a zeal of God. I mean, they zealous in what they're doing. They so zealous, man, and, and, and they, they got folks following here from everywhere. They had the zeal of God. Then Paul said, but it's not according to knowledge. He said, it's not according to knowledge. See, if they had the knowledge, then they wouldn't be doing a thing they, they, they'd be doing. One example, one man wouldn't be saying, you can pick the church of your choice. 
if they was in the true knowledge of the Lord, men wouldn't be telling folks, you can, you can just call on the Lord anywhere. Just fall on your knees and say, Lord, come into my life and save me the way I am. You know, that it, it don't work that way. Now, if you come into the true knowledge of the Lord and study the word, God, we're going to show you, show us what we need to do, how we need to do. You're going to show us the pattern that we need to follow. So we're talking about we're going to learn how to build on a foundation. And then this foundation that we build on will never change. The foundation of Christ will never change. The oracles of God will never change. The principle of Christ will never change. The uh, uh, foundation, uh, the oracles, the format that the church already been established, set up the way it is, it will never change. This is what's going to take us home to heaven. This is the only place that we can go that's going to take us home. Remember, Jesus said that the gates of hell should not prevail against what? Against his church. So if we want to go to heaven, then we got to go to the vehicles that are going to get us there. Y'all, our time is gone. We got to go now. We got to go now. Once again, I want to thank you for the time that we have had together. And just having this little short di discussion I had to give you a little bit about the Church of Christ. Uh, I had to give you a little bit about the Church of Christ because uh, it, it nothing complete until we tell you about the Church of Christ, the one church that Jesus died for. It was all along without a friend. Jesus suffered to pay it all. He died for me. He died for you so that we might have a home in heaven. Jesus is good to us. Jesus is good to us. You remember the song that you heard when it first came on? It says, sometime at midnight, the clouds in the heavenly sky, they are just rolling all across the heavenly sky. It just remind me one of these old days. King Jesus is coming riding on his clouds of chariot. Sometimes I look up and see the clouds just rolling all across the heavenly sky. It just reminds me one of these old days. King Jesus is coming with 10,000 of his saints ready to do battle for the Lord. That judgment day is coming. The Lord is coming riding on his chariot. Every man everywhere will see him coming riding on his chariot. It may be at midnight. It may be at noonday, the rain may be coming down from the heavenly sky. Then this old earth will roll, it roll back like a scroll. The angel will sound that last trumpet. Time here will be no more. Yes, the Lord is coming on riding on this cloud of chariot. The Lord is coming. The Lord is coming. You know, John talk about the Lord coming in the book of Revelation. They talk about that how he coming. And when he come, and when he come to judge this world, time here will be no more. Jude talk about that the Lord is coming. He coming with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment upon all that know not God. Jesus is coming. So that's why we run it in the churches of Christ, trying to do all that we can do to save somebody's soul before it be too late. This is your invitation to come to the Lord. You have heard the word of the Lord. That's what you have seen this for. Do you believe in the word of the Lord? Are you willing to repent of your sin? Confess Christ and put him on in baptism and come into the Lord's house and live faithful under death. We in the churches of Christ is waiting on you. The angels in heaven is waiting to rejoice for you obeying the word of the Lord. If you have heard this lesson and you are a member of the church and have gone astray, why don't you come on back home? Come on back to the Lord. For Jesus said, come unto me. I want to give you rest. Jesus said, come unto me and take my yoke on, up on you and learn of me. Come unto me. And let me help you run this race. I will never leave you. And I will never forsake you. I will be with you 
unto the end. I'm trying to encourage my brother to come on back home. If you're here and your heart is heavy laden and you need somebody to pray with you, we in the Church of Christ will fall down on our bending knees and we will pray for you. We will pray that the Lord will give you strength just to hold on unto his unchanging hand. This is your imitation. Thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ. It was all along without a friend. Jesus died for me and you. Thank you for the blood. He let him beat him all night long. Yeah. And we in the church of Christ, thank Jesus. Thank you for the Hallelujah. Of Jesus Christ, my Lord. And I thank you for the blood. There's no better friend one can have than Jesus. Thank you for the blood. I thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood. Nicodemus asked a question. How can a man be born again? Jesus told him, you must be born of the water and of the spirit. Yeah. This is your invitation to come unto the Lord. You have heard the word. Do you believe in the word of God? Are you willing to repent of your sin, confess Christ? And put them on in baptism. Come to the Lord and learn how to live faithful unto death. And we want to thank the Lord for his blood. Hallelujah. If you want to be free from sin, come on to Jesus. There's deliverance in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you. There is power in the blood. There is saving power in Jesus. Hallelujah. That's why we're on the run in the church of Christ trying to save somebody's soul. Christ our Lord, power in the blood. So much power, y'all. Thank you for the blood. And I thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood. We in the church of Christ, we're waiting on you to come up. If you know somebody in the church of Christ, call them up right now and say, I want to be a Christian. I want to be baptized in the church of Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you for the love. And I thank you for the love. 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 Jesus Christ, my Lord. Thank you for the We in the churches of Christ, we thank the Lord for his precious blood. 
We thank the Lord for his blood. Him dying out there on that old rugged cross just to save us from our sin. My name is Brother Prentice Boxdale Sr. And I want to thank each one of you for the time that we have had together in studying this lesson. Remember, if you have your question wrote down, please get in contact with someone at the Church of Christ near to you. And we'll be glad to sit down with you and open the Bible up with you and show you the way of the Lord. Yes, we in the members of the Church of Christ, we are waiting on you. Guess what? The angels in heaven is waiting on you. And when you go down there and get baptized, guess what? The whole heaven will rejoice over one sinner that repentance. What a great joy it is when you come to the Lord. Y'all, we got to go. We got to go. And I thank you once again for the time that we have had together. Let us bow and go in prayer. Our gracious and heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your grace and mercy. We thank you for this discussion we have had. We pray that it will have touched somebody's heart, mind, and soul, that this lesson will call many souls to come to you before it everlasting in eternity too late. Father, we pray for every member in the Church of Christ that we'll be planted just like a tree by the rivers of water, that when the waves and storm of life come, we'll be found standing, holding up, Hallelujah, this blood-stained banner. Lord, just be with us. Direct our hearts in the might, right, and pathway. We thank you for the Church of Christ. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. And this is our prayer. In Christ Jesus' mercy, in everlasting glorious name, I want to thank you again. Thank you, thank you, from the bottom of my heart. The Lord is coming, y'all. The Lord is coming. The Lord is coming. Yeah.